everyone is due about 1.4 ICU emissions in their life, so all of us will see the ICU in America. I'd never been in the hospital before, never been sick before. I was a pretty normal high school student in Chicago and was playing basketball and started to have stomach aches. Took an antibiotic and uh, when I took the antibiotic, I started to bleed from that and the bleeding didn't stop. The test showed that I had ulcerative colitis. I found out later from my parents, they didn't want to tell me how sick I was, although as a teenager, it's quite apparent to you how sick you are. More doctors came to see me and they said, you're going to have surgery tomorrow or you won't live to see tomorrow night. It was terrifying. I'd been an athlete all through my life and now I couldn't barely walk down the hospital hallway without being short of breath. I couldn't leave the floor because they were worried I would fall. You know, it's hard as a 15-year-old to realize you're that feeble. Post-ICU syndrome is all very real. There's a significant amount of muscle loss that occurs and weight loss that occurs. You can lose a kilogram of lean body mass a day. That leads to incredible weakness and loss of function. We don't move our patients like we should. We don't get them out of bed. Um, if the patient says, I don't feel like getting out of bed today, we so often say, oh, okay, maybe we'll try tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes weeks sometimes. And it's no wonder they don't walk. Early mobility programs are being adopted across the country. We know we need to get people up, even on the ventilators, we need to get people up. We need to be encouraged to eat and to walk and to do exercises that encourage balance and strength and, and mobility. It isn't so much about mortality, it's about quality. Because realizing it's time to start walking someone, feeding someone, changing the way we sedate someone, getting them off the ventilator in a timely fashion, two weeks into their stay, it's too late. People are afraid to get sick people up out of bed because something bad will happen. You do have to have the right team. To have a committed respiratory therapist, you have to have a committed nurse, you have to have a committed physical therapist, committed physician team. There are very few states of illness or equipment that will keep someone from walking. We as physicians and critical care and surgeons and others always want to say, well, our patients are different. My patients are sicker. Well, you, you can't tell me that the patients anywhere are sicker than in the John Hopkins ICU or in our cardiac ICU here at Duke. I mean, this is the sort of one of the godfather programs of cardiac surgery. Uh, we, we take the sickest of the sick. Um, they walk. They walk with more tubes coming out of them than you can count. I've had 22 surgeries now and been in the ICU more than one time. In any tragedy, I think that happens that you're involved in, you want to find some meaning in it. And for me, the way to find meaning in it was, was to have it be motivating to say, I can take this experience and, and I think I can teach others to do this better.